This is the best for in a guide. I can make that will focus on how to actually play her. This is a complete guide with a powerpoint but no wrapping. Farina is a sword user with nothing going special in her normal attacks, but in her charge attacks, she can change her arc alignment, from Usia to Numa or vice versa. Usia being the offensive state and Numa being the healing and defensive state, and this will all take shape when we talk about her elemental skill. Farina starts with Usia alignment as a default. Her dress has like a darker tone, dark blue, and short hair. Her elemental skill, when in Usia state, will summon three Pokemons, namely Squidward, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs. They will attack the enemies and will consume your whole team's HP for additional damage. They will stop consuming the HP of a character if the character has below 50% hit points. And they attack very fast, so expect that your team will drop their HP very fast. And that's why you need a healer in your team. These Pokemons will take the field for a very long time of 30 seconds and you will get your skill cooldown ready by 10 seconds before that duration expires. They will follow you wherever you go, hitting enemies even if you don't want to because they are war freak. So no need to worry about repositioning. Free now when in Numa state, instead of 3 Pokemons, she will create a totem that will heal the on-field character, not the whole team. It has the same duration and cooldown, it's stationary, meaning there's only a certain distance that it can heal you, but it's large enough to not be an issue. But the main issue is the energy. It doesn't generate energy at all. So you cannot just play Farina in a full healing mode and doing no elemental burst, because her elemental burst is one of the strongest buffs right now in the game. If you really want Farina to be a healer because you don't have one or using them on another team in the abyss, then you can switch from Usia to Numa in your rotation. The existing 3 Pokemons will disappear and will be replaced by the healing totem right where you did the charge attack. And you can do the charge attack again to replace the totem back to the 3 Pokemons. The switching of these states along with two different effects of elemental skill doesn't affect the duration and cooldown. It will still be 30 seconds if you change it from healing to offensive and vice versa, same with the cooldown of 20 seconds. Furina doing this HP drain to the team and healing them back with the healer or herself is what her playstyle are all about. And that's because Furina's elemental burst is a very powerful buff to the team that requires changes in the HP to give more damage bonus to the team. For every 1% of change in the HP, you get one fanfare point. And with each one of it, it gives 0.25% damage bonus. If you have two characters at 50% HP and you full heal them, you will get 50% HP change times 2, and that's 100%, so you get 100 fanfare point as well. Then multiply to 0.25%, you get 25% damage bonus to the whole team. The maximum fanfare you can get is 300, 75% damage bonus at talent level 10. Some quick calculation can estimate how much you need. 300 divided by 4, you need 25% HP for everyone and when you full heal them, you get the maximum damage bonus in an instant. So this is your target, this is your goal. Get all of your members down to 25% and use a very powerful healing to get the maximum buff instantly. But this is all theoretical. In actual combat scenario, you will rarely have your characters on the red HP, but even so, every small decrease and increase in everyone's HP still counts as a fanfare stocks. So even if you did not get 300 stocks in an instant, you will eventually reach the max stocks for the maximum damage bonus. Think of it like Yelan's damage bonus buff, it gets stronger as it approaches the last second of its duration. So how do we capitalize these mechanics? Use a dedicated healer and just let Farina go offensive with her Usia elemental skill Pokemons. She's a sub DPS and a buffer, not really an on-field main DPS like Hotao. So you have to have your team revolve around your actual dedicated on-field main DPS. And your number one priority is always the buffs to your team and the debuffs to your enemies. For example, Diluc. I need to get the Pyro Swirl and Hydro Swirl with Kazua. 
I also need to get Bennett's buff duration working in most of the looks on field time. Then Farina's elemental burst and hydro application. We need to design a rotation that will get all these buffs. And the greatest challenge is time. Farina's burst lasts for 18 seconds, Bennett for 12 seconds, and actually it's 13.27 seconds. Link in the pinned comment if you want to know why. And Gazos VV Shred for only 10 seconds. And this timing and how we construct our rotation is something we have to really focus on. If you really want to min max your Farina teams, it gets very technical and it's not as easy as they say, especially in vaporize and melt reactions. Farina have some Ungabunga teams but she also has some hard teams to master and we will talk more of it later on. For the healers, you should consider some powerful healing characters like Full Heal Bennett Build, Kokomi, Mika, Charlotte and probably the best right now is Jin and Baiju. These 4 characters can insta heal everyone upon their burst cast which is very good for accumulating funfair stacks. And lastly is the energy recharge, the most important stats for smoother rotation. And talking about energy, it is actually the stat you should focus as the first priority until you get to a reasonable value. Generally, ideally, recommendedly, 200% ER is a good place to start. 130% if you're using a team of double hydro with Favonius Selan or Singcho because they produce lots of hydro particles. Any other double hydro duo like Kokomi, Child, Aito and those who doesn't produce lots of particles can increase the recommended ER to 160%. Now if you have Farina using Favonius Sword, you will have no problem in your energy at all. You can just focus solely on other stats for your artifacts. The other stats you should aim for are crit rate and crit damage, with 1 is to 2 ratio as a good rule of thumb. Then your hit points because Farina is an HP scaling character. Lastly, elemental mastery for some off field reaction damage. And you get this stat with the best recommended artifact for her, the Golden Troop. The Golden Troop can increase elemental skill damage up to 70% when she's off-field, much higher than a Hydro Damage Goblet can give. That makes HP Goblet equal or slightly better than a Hydro Goblet if we consider her burst damage bonus of like 50% to 75%. The difference just all depends on your substats. We use these artifacts mainly because there is no other way to increase the burst damage bonus buff. This is all we can do. Even if we want to increase her damage bonus buff, all that we have is the elemental skill solo damage performance. Probably we can do something to increase the damage bonus by getting more constellations. Moving on to the second artifact, Vorushaka's Glow. It increases HP by 20% and elemental skill and burst damage by 50% at max. Getting these stacks is pretty easy because of the Pokemon and her passive. Hydro Goblet and HB Goblet, they still on the close debate. And any of these two piece combinations if you really don't have a complete set. Just like me, I'm using Golden Troop and Nymph's Dream. The other four that can also work are Heart of Death, Tenacity of Millilith, Vodushaka's Glow, and Emblem of Severed Fate. For her weapons, of course, it's none other than her signature weapon, Splendor of Tranquil Waters. Second is Nilo's weapon, Key of Kajnsut. Followed by Festering Desire, which I don't have because I started playing Genshin at version 1.2 and have no idea, zero clue on what's going on this game. All the good old days. So I used and bought the Battle Pass weapon, the Wolf Fang, followed by the Rusty Pipe and Favonius Sword. Favonius Sword is actually much more useful for the team and is probably the smoothest sword to use with Farina. I actually swap from Wolfang to Favonius when I'm playing Farina as a solo hydro character in the team. And lastly, the constellations. C1 gives you an initial 100 fanfare stacks and it increases the stacks to 400. That's 100% damage bonus at max. C2 increases how fast you gain fanfare by 2.5%. Excess fanfare above 400 will be converted for Farina's HP, increasing her damage and healing. C4 gives you more energy and C6 gives her 6 shots of very powerful hydro attacks with her sword, normal attack, plunge attack and charge attacks. In Ulsia's state, her attacks are more powerful and heals the team as it hits. In Yuma state, her attacks become far more powerful than Ulsia version because instead of healing, she consumes the team HP for damage. I won't explain this far enough and get into the details because only a very few of us will have C6 Farina. 
C2 is a good stopping point for powering up your Farina. The next is something special in this guide, Oh My Guide. Probably the only guide that talks about the rotation. So why do we have to talk about the rotation? Notice that I didn't talk about the builds, kits, and stats into deeper details like other creators do, and that's because it's the playstyle that matters the most. A perfectly executed rotation is far more entertaining and rewarding than a random unga bunga. I know this because as a speedrunner who has a very strong builds, still, someone with a weaker build do a faster abyss clears than me. And it's all because of the setup difference, rotation difference, skills, cooldown, energy management, the complete battle plan, the perfect control of the abyss, the god of the abyss. This is the aim of this guide, the mastery of the playstyle of the character. Notice that you can't control your builds because of artifact RNG. It's just uncontrollable. It takes time but you still have no authority to the artifact drop rates. But this is something you can control. So I present to you 5 teams of different rotations that will give you a fair idea on how to actually play Farina at her full potential. We start with the easiest team, the Mono Hydro. I start with the Ellen skill to make some particles for the Hydro characters if they ever need one, because the rotation setup is just as long as the cooldown itself. By the time her skill cooldown finishes, she's already about to enter the field. Then for in a skill, and I will use Singchu's burst and skill first. Singchu's field time is quite long and my main DPS is C5 Yalan, so it doesn't matter if his burst expires first, it's the Hydro resistance shred that is more important. 18 seconds of rain swords plus the last state of that rain sword for 4 seconds of hydro shed. The useful time of Singchu's burst is actually 22 seconds, the longest in the team. So you get to cast the longest burst duration first, then your second longest which is Farina's burst. This also makes the team HP drop down a little more than doing Farina's burst right after Singchu's burst. Then followed by Jin's burst to get the fanfare quickly and apply the VV shred for 10 seconds. Then back to Yelan. The VV Shred will expire first halfway on my DPS window, so I will switch back to Jin to reapply it and get more particles. I can finish it in one rotation but I want to show the second rotation. It's the same exact thing, Farina skill, then Sing Cho skill and burst. Then back to Farina burst and they died. We have the full buff all throughout Yelan's own slot. But we need Jin to enter halfway to reapply the VV Shred. Next is the Freeze team with Charlotte. We will have a different Yelan setup since this is a crowd chamber. I will advance my Yelan's burst buff a bit for a stronger elemental skill later. Yelan's buff gets stronger over time, so when she enters the field midway of her burst, it's already on the high side of the buff. We will get a strong elemental skill by then. We start with the barb shot to apply Hydro and Farina skill then Charlotte camera. Note that we did not use Farina's burst early, because I want the Pokemon to drain a little more HP before I insta heal with Charlotte. Kazuo for the swirl and burst, hopefully killing the first wave and enter Yelan for the burst. Now Farina's burst and insta heal of Charlotte. This will apply massive cryo and will keep them frozen so Kazuo can swirl the hydro for Yelan to enter the field. Yelan hits about 130k instead of my usual 100k because of the advanced burst cast. I don't need the full duration of Yelan's burst to kill this wave. I can always insert some fast normal attacks as I switch to different characters to make the dice attack. And comes the second wave. I still have some shots left with the dice as I start the second rotation. Freena skill, camera, Kazuha skill and burst, then I did Freena and heal first before Yelan's burst, because I no longer need Yelan's skill damage at this stage. What I need now is the burst duration for the Pyro Lector shield. We can see that my skill damage is back to 100k. This rotation includes the planning of this chamber. I fought this chamber far so many times already, so I know what will happen next in this chamber. And Electro Charge is up. This is quite an unga bunga team because all the buffs will be dynamic. It doesn't snapshot, it buffs the team real time. So even if Beida already casted her burst, it gets increasingly stronger as Farina gains fanfare points. And this is the same with Fischl. Now I've made a mistake here, I forgot a healer. So I made use of this card, Elemental Burst Heal. 
I go to this spot first so that the knockback from the overload will push the Dendro Charul into the Santa Claus. It gets quite annoying if enemies fly all over the place. I start with Furina skill, Oz, then Beidou skill and burst. The sequence doesn't actually matter. I just want Beidou first to get her burst cooldown ready on the next rotation. She has quite a cooldown herself. Her burst is not 100% uptime. Fischel has 100% uptime by simply swapping from skill and burst. Sucrose is the on-field swappable character here. She is not restricted to staying on the field in a certain amount of time. She has the freedom to swap to others as early as she wants, because all you want for her is the swirl reactions and Fifi Shred. The trick on this team is to watch over all their cooldowns. Since their cooldowns doesn't match up, just simply casting all the available bursts and skills is actually the best play. It's all 100% uptime, the buffs, the hydro, and the electro except Beidou. So I'm keeping my eye on Beidou's burst, and should use it as soon whenever possible. I tried a disciplined rotation, like this comes first then this last, but it's not as fast as this Unga Bunga style. So I recommend to play Unga Bunga and let your battle instinct kick them in the asses. And that's for the easiest team. So let's go now to one of the hardest rotation and setup. This is a harder rotation than Child International. They look vaporize. And it works just like this. I start with Furina skill and burst, then change to Numa to prevent applying Hydro too much. I will need to stop Hydro application so that Kazuha can swirl the pyro later. Next is Kazuha skill for particles, then burst. This will be a Hydro absorbed burst. Next is Bennett skill and burst. It will eliminate Hydro and apply pyro. Now back to Kazuha for a quick skill to swirl that pyro. Any milliseconds later, the Hydro Absorb Burst will remove this Pyro status. So be quick to swirl the Pyro before the Hydro Burst. Now back to Farina to change back to Usia to her Pokemons for Hydro Damage and Application. The good news is, Farina's Hydro Application is just enough for Diluc to vape all his attacks. We do the standard Diluc combo and the Burst will hit just right before Bennett and Kazuha's buff expire. But the next rotation will demonstrate why this rotation is very hard. Here comes Furina again for her skill and burst, and the healing totem switch. Kazuha skill and burst, Bennett skill and burst, and as I switch to Kazuha and swear the pyro, the pyro actually disappeared right before the skill. And it's all because of this little mistake that I made by doing a normal attack with Bennett and Kazuha. That millisecond difference did take the pyro swirl opportunity, so I lost the pyro swirl. And so we try again. Here I thought that I had it all right, but by watching the replay, even though I got no mistake, the Hydro Burst still eats the Pyro status preventing the Pyro Swirl. On the second rotation, I did it right, but I want it perfect so let's try again. Here I did a very good first rotation, but on the second rotation, I got hit by the frog. This is a very critical time to be hit. If I dodge, I will still lose the Pyro Swirl. Probably there's a solution here, just perform a quick normal attack with Bennett to apply back the pyro. But not all of us has C6 Bennett activated. It's not always the mistakes and delays, enemies can also destroy the timing as well. And we try again, and again. My subconscious hand just did a random normal attack with Kazuha, delaying Bennett's entrance, and as we all know, we lost the pyro swirl again. And I tried again and failed again, until I finally get the grasp, the right subconscious muscle memory of my hand. And finally this time, I got it right. But he died already. But I did it up to the most critical part, two times in a row. This setup needs lots of practice, and more practice, to get your muscle memory working for you. To be honest, I have my child international rotation permanently saved inside my hands because I'm using that team for nearly as long as when I created this YouTube channel. And that is what it takes to master some hard rotation. This is not the only rotation available for this team. Pulin, one of the strongest Diluc main in YouTube, have a quicker rotation than this one. But this rotation is what I found most comfortable with. His rotation is far too hard for me. Maybe I need more practice or just completely remove the swirl setup that makes it hard, replacing Kazuha with another Hydro character. And here we go to the last team I prepared for you. Double Hydro Swirlless Vaporize team with Hotao. 
this is far easier than the Pyro's World setup and it hits just as hard if not harder. This team is so strong and easy. I even forgot that Manette still has the Dull Blade and they still one cycle the triangle. So here's how it works. I start with Farina's skill and burst. Then Yelan's burst, Bennett's skill and burst, then back to Yelan. Because the triangle still have massive resistance if I did Yelan's skill first before Bennett. I conserve the two hits of Yelan's skill in the exact time the resistance of the triangle drops down. And enter Hu Tao, two charge attacks and burst. I timed the burst to hit the Beyblades to destroy it. Hutao's burst applies strong pyro. It is very good in destroying these mechanical parts. And the onslaught continues with the dull blade Bennett. For the following rotation, I did another one to show you what it's like on the second rotation. It's very much the exact same thing just for demonstration. I think Tilo can perform good in a double hydro team as well. Replacing Kazuha with another off-field hydro can still be as good and much easier and smoother to play. The rotation of your team adjusted to the enemies, I call it the overall setup. A battle plan all throughout the whole chamber. You can design your own setup as long as you know how your team works. You can deviate from the usual rotations, make use of enemy weaknesses, their positions and other factors. Your team is not meant to be played by a robot-like rotation. Knowledge and fluidity of the team is far stronger than Artifact RNG. But still, I cannot sleep without seeing a full power Bennett in this team. So I will end this video with this clip and their builds with an epic music. Come